talk about three things you need to know to be successful. Um, I don't claim to be an expert on that, but I think what's important is really that everyone's definition of success is, is different. To some people it might be salary, it might be a title, um, it might be power or influence. Um, I think for me though, I know what my definition is, and that is that I'm doing a job that I enjoy most of the time, I'll tell you about that later, um, and that I'm also there so that I can go to the events that I want to go to with my children, so that I can take a holiday. I don't have one or the other, and I also don't claim to have the perfect balance, but for me, that's what I wanted. Um, so, these are my personal experiences, and the three things that I've picked up, there are obviously loads of things, and I could talk to you about, I'm sure Karen would like it, the importance of networking um, and keeping up your professional contacts. But these are more what I would call sort of fluffy things that I think are important. And the first is to teach yourself, if you aren't already, to be resilient. And resilience is, as you all know, the ability to overcome difficulties and, and toughness. Um, it's sometimes really, really difficult to maintain that. Um, all it can take is one particularly difficult client to get under your skin and you think everything might be going wrong. And it's just something you have to be able to bounce back. And if you can't do it, you have to train yourself to do it. I think you're always going to be facing obstacles, no matter which career you're in, which area you're in. And sometimes those obstacles are not what you expected. So, for example, about four years ago, I was asked by my firm to set up a branch office in Richmond, and it was a greenfield site. We hadn't been there, and it was a whole new world. And my entire focus was on how do we get clients in that don't know us in that area, what am I going to do? And I, I worked my socks off trying to get clients in, and we managed to do that. And that was no problem. Actually, the problem was a staffing issue. Um, and I suddenly thought, gosh, it's staffing issue. That there were two people that were working together that were winding each other up and it was infecting the atmosphere. That was not something I had thought I was going to have to overcome and I had to use all my mediation skills to try and get, get that sorted out. And it was, it was really difficult, you know, and I'd go home sometimes and think, oh, just get on, why can't you just get on? They're much more important things. But Resilience, you need to understand that and believe that you can work things out. You can work anything out. Nothing is that bad. My second one is, and I don't want to sound like a, a woman's magazine, but it is the work-life balance. And I don't mean, you know, the time. What I mean is that you are able to get perspective on things outside of work. Because I think sometimes, you know, if you're working on a big case with a demanding client, and working really long hours and you sometimes it's easy to lose perspective on what what is important and what makes you happy as a person etc so it's important to have good you know, to friends to nurture those friendships and, and see them make time for them it's important to book in your holidays even though you may feel like you don't have time to go book them well in advance and just say no to work comes up during that during that time the third thing I wanted to say is, and perhaps it should have been first, is that you need to enjoy what you do, in my view, 90% of the time. Because I say 90% because we all have bad days. And I was speaking earlier to Lisa and saying that some days I come home and I think, you know, I just like to go and teach yoga because, you know, it's so intense. And you think, oh, this is, this is not the job I wanted. So you will have those days, and it may sometimes turn into a few days, but my rule is it, it can't be more than 10% of my year spent thinking I don't like this. If you don't like what you're doing, you may think, ooh, can I make a career change? It may not be that drastic. For me, I realized that what I enjoyed doing was the interaction with the client much more than some standard paperwork. There is some standard paperwork involved, and I did, and I 
I enjoyed seeing clients for the first time and working out how I could help them and, and really feeling like they felt a lot safer after they'd seen me. So I've not, I've got an assistant in and she does the standard paperwork and I always see the client the first time because if you do something you enjoy, you will be good at it. If you are half-hearted about it, you're not likely to be any good at it. So you can look at making small changes in the way that you work to give you more enjoyment in what you do. Perfect. I don't know if that's five minutes, but that's, that's all. perfect. Thank you very much.